All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. It's the first Malsberg panel of the year. And joining us on said panel is Democratic political consultant and political strategist at Doug Schoen, LLC. Jessica Tarlov is here and host of the uh, syndicated Roger Hedgecock radio show, The Roger Hedgecock Show, Roger Hedgecock. And uh, let me uh, start with both of you. Um, Happy New Year. And uh, I start with this because the mayor of New York just finished uh, addressing um, some police brass and uh, the media. And uh, what he did was he touted the uh, crime stats for 2014 and how they've you know, improved and what a great, uh, this is the world's greatest police department. But a lot of people thought that the mayor would have taken this opportunity to do what uh, our previous guest, uh, two segments ago anyway, the head of the Sergeant's Benevolent Association had asked him to do, and that was to apologize for those very divisive remarks that he made about his son uh, being in danger from NYPD. Uh, but that, that just isn't happening, and I don't think it's ever going to happen, Roger. No, it is not going to happen because uh, William Wilhelm is, uh, Warren Wilhelm is, uh, a.k.a. Bill de Blasio, is actually a dyed-in-the-wool Nicaragua Sandinista communist. He is opposed to the police. He's opposed to the entire idea of policing. He's opposed to the entire idea of policing until he gets control of the police, and then it's going to be a repressive regime for sure. But you look at those black protesters in those diners yesterday in Manhattan, disrupting people's brunch, screaming about uh, white prejudice, and disrupting and, and making white people, they said a white woman cried as if that was one of their big goals and objectives. Listen, Obama and de Blasio and Al Sharpton, they want a race war and they're likely to get one. What about it, Jessica? Well, wow. Okay, so that was a lot. Um, I disagree with the, ca uh, the characterization of uh, de Blasio that was just offered. I do not think that he's handled this situation well, and I think that there is an apology that is due. I think you should never be with Al Sharpton in times like these. But at the same time, to say that he hates the police, I mean, you, you don't put Bill Bratton in charge of the police force if you don't... Uh, if you don't believe in it, if you don't believe in the principles behind it. And, I mean, Bill Bratton created the NYPD that we had under Ray Kelly as well. And I, I think you're really going too far there. We, we are on the heels or maybe heading into more of a race war than I think that we expected. Um, but I think that we have to give de Blasio a little bit of slack on this. And uh, maybe you're not going to get the apology that you want, but this is not a man who wants the city falling apart. Look at the de Blasio lie, uh, Steve, is this, that he had to counsel his son because his son is black, that he's going to have to be careful because the police, the police, all of them, are going to be after him as a black man. That's what he specifically I, ought to take back, and he ought to apologize, and Jessica, he should apologize for that. That is a blatant racist smear against the police department. I, I, I think yeah, what goes Jessica, on... there's two separate... Okay. Okay. Sorry, go ahead, Steve. I... No, no, I was just going to say uh, the media is trying and the people on the left are trying to, you know, put, merge these two things together. Uh, it's fine to say I had a talk with my son and told him to right. respect the police. But what he said is my police force has been racist for decades and I'm afraid for my son at the hands of my police force. Right. I don't think those were his exact words. I mean, I, I'm that not going to deny that. That's it was what he said. I if that's like the if that's the exact quote, that's not what I heard that it was. But I, I don't doubt the fact that he had that conversation and then it had racial undertones. But we do know that there have been issues with the police department before. And I mean, we're on high alert at this point. I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying that things are only going to get worse unless everyone on both sides calms down. And I'm not saying that de Blasio shouldn't apologize, but I think that uh, conversations like this and using incendiary language like we're used at the top of the program is not helpful to getting to a peaceful resolution and reconciliation in New York well, and across the country. Let's start with reconciliation. Let's start with reconciliation with the Communist Party, the Nation of Islam, the Black Panthers, and all the rest of these agitator groups who've come in to exploit this situation and turn it into a race war with the blessing of Al Sharpton, who sits at the right hand of de Blasio, who sits at the right hand of Obama at the White House for 59 times in the last six months. This, these things are facts, Jessica. I'm not an Al Sharpton supporter. I don't know if you heard that. If you did, it's not true. But, but, I, the, I, but the mayor this, is, and the president is, and the attorney general is. And that's exactly. the problem. Exactly. Okay, I, All right, we're going to come really... back, guys. All right, Jessica and Roger, stay where you are. We have another. I mean, 
So um, a funny thing happened to Jessica while she was on the uh, Mike Huckabee show uh, over the weekend. We'll tell you what it was, and we'll talk about Mike Huckabee's future and more. Don't go away. All right, folks, we're back with the Molesburg panel and uh, Democratic political consultant and political strategist Jessica Tarlov and host of the Roger Hedgecock syndicated radio show, Roger Hedgecock. All right, so uh, Jessica, uh, you were on uh, Mike Huckabee's uh, show on, uh, well, over the weekend, I guess Saturday it, it, it Saturday, taped. Yeah. And um, then a funny thing happened, huh? <laughs> on the way to the forum, yeah. Uh, he surprised everyone, well, not the producers, uh, when he announced at the end that it was going to be his last show uh, because he was exploring the idea of running for president and it was going to be a conflict with having a Fox News show. Um, yeah, so that happened. <laughs> so, so, so where do you think this is uh, all going to lead? Um, he, he said it wouldn't be fair to Fox to uh, continue the show while he's exploring. I mean, I give him great right. credit for that. Whether or not Fox told him to leave or not, I don't know. But yeah. um, do you think that he's, uh, you know, from your political point of view, do you think he's a serious contender going forward? I think he is within a certain subset of the GOP. I mean, I don't think that he kind of holds a candle to Jeb Bush or the more people in the middle, which I think is really what America's looking for. Um, but he did in his opening monologue, which I would encourage everyone uh, to watch and my segment, which was immediately after, um, he talks about the kind of bipartisanship and conciliation uh, that he had while he was governor in Arkansas and that he was working with a mostly Democratic legislature and he got, that he got a lot done. And I think that it's incredibly important. I mean, after the 2014 midterms, over 80 percent of Americans said that what they really want is compromise in Washington. We have over 60 percent in agreement on what they want on immigration reform. Uh, we have 85 percent uh, who know what they want in terms of debt deficit and fiscal reform. You know, they want compromise on spending, uh, spending cuts and tax increases and the like, entitlement reform, these kinds of things. And uh, Governor Huckabee spoke about them, and I think that that's incredibly important. I think that his problem will be his social conservatism, and if he can play uh, down uh, the gay marriage issue and abortion to a state's rights issue, that maybe he can get away or at least be ahead of the evangelical pack. But it's a much more crowded field than it was in 2008. Well, Roger, uh, of course, some don't see that as a problem, and some don't believe that, uh, that uh, I'll, let me rephrase it, many of us believe that uh, when it comes to the social issues, that Mike Huckabee is in line with uh, the majority of Americans on abortion, on marriage, on, on many social issues. We're talking about the candidate who came in number one in 2008 in the Iowa primaries and did very well in six or eight others. Uh, so it's obvious that there is a base of voters in the primary system, in the Republican Party, that are going to be very interested in Mike Huckabee, and rightfully so. But I do think, and Jessica's right, we ought to be looking at him and every one of these candidates to present a comprehensive picture, because it isn't just the social issues that matter. It isn't just the fiscal issues that matter. It isn't just foreign policy that matters. We've got to look at all of these things, because we're in trouble on all these fronts. No, we, we, we definitely are. And I, w I just want to touch on something also. Um, you know, Jessica, you mentioned uh, Jeb Bush. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't, I, I, why do you think a Jeb Bush could win the Republican nomination? I think that he has incredible fundraising ability, uh, first off. He has his first fundraiser tomorrow up in Greenwich where he has family ties and where there's a ton of hedge fund money, as we know. Um, he has a moderate platform that I think uh, does appeal at the end of the day. Um, he has a name, for better or for worse, that is recognizable. I mean, we'll see if there, how bad Bush fatigue is. And I think a lot of what happens foreign policy-wise in the coming months will affect that. Um, but I think that... I, at, at this moment, he has I, the highest fundraising ability, and that's what matters I, Ro, most Ro, right out of the I, gate. I, I, I want to give Roger the final word here. Ro, Ro, may, Roger, may I, uh, I, of course. May, uh, yeah, may please. I join with a, may I join with a majority of Americans who do not want the choice in 2016 to be Clinton versus Bush? Can we get somebody else? Yeah, and we have plenty of people on the uh, Republican side who would fit that bill, absolutely. All right, hey, thanks for being the first panel of, uh, you were the last show of Huckabee, Jessica. Now you're the first <laughs> panel of the Molesburg show for the year. Wow, lasts and firsts and all that stuff. And Roger, as always, great to see you, my friend. We'll see you, you. soon. Uh, folks, uh, the thanks Molesburg panel, ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure. All right, when we come back, 
It's uh, good to me. Well, you know, I said like to say, you know what, you love it, you got to have it. Uh, give me five, and uh, we have three very important give me fives today. So I want you to watch closely. It's next on the Steve Malsberg Show.